Well, we've uh, we've kept on track so far, and therefore, uh, at this point, we'll get on to programming this this transor tomber. Now, we've already programmed the sharp plucking tomber earlier, so uh, some of you may be asking, or or have forgotten why we're bothering programming another lead. Well, apart from the fact that me and John couldn't actually agree on a lead earlier, another reason comes down to how trans music is arranged. Without going into too much detail on trans music arrangement now. After all, we've got an entire session devoted to that a little later. Uh, trans can be seen as consisting essentially of a, a part A and a part B. Generally, the music starts and plays part A, which then slowly evolves into a part B and then returns back to part A for the very end of the song. Therefore, while we do need some parts to continue the same throughout the music, mostly the drums and the bass to help maintain a constant rhythm section and groove, we can move from one lead instrument to another, which in effect can create a higher state of energy before we move back to the original lead again. I don't know if that's making sense or not, so if you're not quite following, if you just bear with us, by the time we've finished on the arrangement session, this will make perfect sense to you. As we've discussed in earlier sessions, coming up with any musical idea is down to letting your mind wander. Uh, it's created by listening to the music and falling into it, uh, letting it envelop your mind, body and soul, and once you're there, your creative mind tends to do the rest. You just need to be prepared to get that down. Having said that, we've already programmed one lead, um, our original MIDI idea that we knocked down right at the very beginning in uh, the session one. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that. Now, this isn't being lazy and we're not cheating. What we're doing is we're creating something called continuity. One of the biggest problems I find that most aspiring producers face is is that of continuity. They, they tend to throw too many ideas into the same song and then the track just ends up this desperate mess that's, that's confusing. A track doesn't need 300 ideas in it to work and usually when you put lots of ideas into a track it, it, it's attempting to hide poor quality timbres or, or trying to attack the music with no sense of real direction. I mean, if you think back, how many ideas did we start with in session one? If you think way back to the first session, and don't jump back to check, but just how many ideas were there? Well, essentially, there were two. The chords and the lead. We could say the bass as well, but really we developed the bass off the chords, and it was a simple eighth offbeat, so we're going to say that there was two ideas. There was the chord structure and the lead. That's it. There's been no secrets, you've been following along with us on, on this DVD and, and while for obvious reasons we've had to edit it, it down a little, you've seen how we started with basically nothing more than two ideas and using nothing more than production ethics, our, our processing effects and synthesis, we've developed those ideas into to what we have now. Well, of course we've added this here, the, the piano, but there wasn't an awful lot of production ethics in that, and I can't say that the, the pattern is, is really that complicated. In fact, if you listen back to what we have now, just for, just for a minute, and just remember that the entire thing was born and evolved from nothing more than two incredibly simple ideas. Now, we already know that we want a, a, a trans saw type lead, so, so I suppose the first step is to actually program in a saw lead that, that's going to fit with the rest of the instrumentation. Now, as you can see here, we, we've put the MIDI back in from our original our original ideas in session one. Um, it's a good job actually recorded this because we got rid of it and <laughs> we just had to go back and uh, stab it all in again. But... Um, the first step now is, is, is to actually program in a saw lead that, that's going to fit with the rest of the instrumentation. Now, we've programmed trans leads countless times, so, so for us it's pretty much becoming second nature this. But if, if you have very little experience of programming a good trans lead, I'd once again suggest you reread the Dance Music Manual, or if you haven't read it, 
read it. Particularly the trans chapter and programming theory for synthesis. Uh, if I recall correctly, that's chapter 4 and 12. Don't quote me on that though. Now, remember this DVD is not supposed to be a cookie cutter. Um, we don't want to say do this, do that, and you'll sound just like we do here. Uh, to be honest, we couldn't see the point in producing something like that. Rather, the idea is to watch how we work and then jump on your own sequencer, give what we do a go, and you'll feel much more artistic and self-confident if you come up with your own sonic signatures. Something that sounds different from what we're doing here. Anyway, we'll start by getting down a typical saw lead that will fit into our mix. As far as we know so far, the main lead will be playing with all the other instruments, so we need to exercise some care that the, the timbre doesn't interfere too much with those timbres. Now, this is the reason why we said that we leave the main lead until near the very end of the production. It's simply so that we don't program it too large. And now we have all the other timbres in and all working together, we can now fit a lead in there and we can program it so it fits. There's often some confusion over what makes a good trance lead. And the secret is actually the synthesizer you use and the analog modeling. To be honest, the best trance leads are going to come from the Axis virus. It really is as simple as that. We've got two sat here, one which is staring at me with its red lights blinking, begging me to use it to produce this lead. And, and well, generally, when it comes to trance, it, these will be our go-to instruments. Since we've already gone to outboard once, we're going to try and avoid doing it again. Now I'm saying try to avoid it, because uh, the truth is we may have no choice and have to turn to them. And if that happens, we'll end up spending a couple of hours here with me mumbling on only for it all to be edited down and, and jump to another Blue Peter with the here's one we did earlier on an outboard synth and imported. But just in case we don't, I'm going to continue waffling on anyway. Now, a good translate consists of, of three things. A body, a fizz, and a bright end. Now... Typically, a trance lead will consist mostly of saws, but there's a square wave in there to add some body, and sometimes a triangle. The saw creates the fizz of the middle, the square creates the body of the timbre, and the triangle can be used to create the brightness. The principle is to make it as fat as possible, and then sculpt it down. Now, to accomplish this, you, you can use effects, but... Now, to accomplish this, you can use the synthesizers then effects, generally chorus and reverb work well to, to build a very wide timbre. And to be honest, generally we can usually do this in one synth, the Access Virus. But seeing as we try to keep to virtual instruments here, we'll use a couple that have quite heavy characteristics. Um, Vanguard and Sawyer. Now before I continue, you'll notice that we have used these two instruments before within this mix on the bass and the first lead. I need to point out that, that as good as they are, this shouldn't be seen as an automatic endorsement. Um, rather, as we start to produce a trance mix, we'll choose three or four instruments and then use them continually throughout. By doing that, it, it gives the mix a certain gel since the instrument's character is continually cropping up through the mix. And it, it just so happens that we turn to Sawyer and Vanguard in the first instance, so we'll pretty much remain with it for now. We do actually find that each instrument has a different characteristic and depending on what kind of sonic signature we want in, in the particular track, we tend to choose instruments based on that. Yeah, To get a feel for uh, each synth's characteristics, um, we always find it useful to spend some time kind of getting to know our synths, uh, so to say. Uh, not so much in the sort of modulation possibilities, but the characteristics of the waveforms they produce, because uh, each will have a different feel basically. Uh, for instance, we feel that sort of Logic's ES2 Sawtooth sounds quite clean and brittle, uh, unlike, say, the Sawtooth from Sawyer that sounds more sort of full and fat in comparison. Um, you, it's generally a good idea to, say, program a riff and then go through each synthesizer's basic waveforms to compare them, um, and that way you'll be more likely to be in tune with what they can offer to your sound design. Because obviously, even if something's thin and brittle, it can still add something to, you know, another waveform that's sort of fat and you know warm, 
uh, you know you get a nice contrast and get an interesting sound anyway let's get on with programming this lead using Vanguardia so we'll, we'll call it Vanguard and we'll edit this first let's drop this and decay down a little uh, we'll try low 24 Well, this can provide the top end, so we'll, we'll copy this down. Um, just copy that down there, and uh, we'll call up the uh, the sire. Right, let's uh, let's get this under some control. <laughs> get this resonance down. Certainly, I certainly added that top end that, it, that, that the Tomba needed. quite as good as what uh, the virus could have accomplished uh, I think we would have got a, a wider sounding timbre from the virus with more of an analog an analog feel to it um, but yeah I, th I think that's okay that's okay um, for, for a set of virtual instruments it's uh, it's come out quite well so what we'll do now is um, I think we've pretty much got all our parts now um, I think we could probably do with just just for the beginning of the track adding a, a little something, a little something extra, um, some some kind of motif. So, we'll have a look at the motif now. See if we can get a motif idea down, and then we're pretty much onto the arrangement then, and we'll see how it works. <laughs> 